Hey guys, Adam Savage here in my cave, uh, answering questions about my time as a host of the show Mythbusters. Uh, and today's question comes from tested patron, Mark Bourbon. It's a good one. Mark says, I've always wondered if the Mythbuster crew at large, i.e. cameramen, etc., ever got to experience some of the more fun myths being tested, i.e. giant water slide or water wakeboarding behind heavy machinery. Seems like the perfect opportunity to set up a barbecue and have some fun. I will tell you, we always wanted to set up a barbecue and have some fun with stories like that. Safety was usually the biggest problem and time. Um, the wakeboarding behind heavy machinery, we totally, I think actually a couple of crew members did get to try that that day. But we were planning for more to, except that the day got away from us like a shoot day really can. And so uh, crew members getting to experience that stuff was infrequent. Except for the water slide. Except for water slide wipeout. Um, so to give you some context, um, Water Slide Wipeout was an episode of Mythbusters, and I think it might have been the very first one to come from a viral video, which basically didn't exist when we started making Mythbusters in 2003, 2002. Um, Twitter didn't exist. YouTube barely existed. All the ways we ended up getting tremendously great stories, they, they weren't there. But then this myth, this, this viral video showed up and it was an ad campaign when the video seemed to show someone sliding down this long water slide and then whew, leaving that water slide, flying like a hundred feet through the air into a kiddie pool, like this big rolling set of like hills and they do this whew, and land safely in the kiddie pool. And this, tons of people said this to me and I was like, yeah, thank you. I'm going to test that like tomorrow. No, this looks lethal. There's no way I want to try this out. And I like commiserated with Dan Tapster, my co-EP, like we can't test the story. And then I started thinking, what is the essence of this story? The essence is, is that it is implying that if you set up a slide correctly, you can reliably hit a target. Because the only way this would have happened is if it was actually feasible, right? Like no one would do this for real just to hope it works. I mean, at least that's my impression. So that made me realize that all we need is a proper target and a safe way to miss that target. Well, that's water. So I pitched us doing it at Pit 232, the quarry lake up in uh, gold country here in Northern California, where we shot all of our underwater explosive myths. And sure enough, it, it, that turned out to be exactly uh, the perfect location. We built a 225 foot water slide uh, with a beautiful curve at the bottom, reinforced with plywood and one by, we laid down oil booms to keep us centered on the track. We had a layer of carpet and then a layer of vinyl and then another layer of a slippery vinyl. We wore wetsuits and then on top of the wetsuits, we wore latex fetish jumpsuits. <laughs> San Francisco, you really can't find anything that you want. Um, and uh, we replicated the story. And it took, it took several days to do this. It took a couple days just to build the slide. And then the, the physics of the slide are so sort of unknowable at their extreme that the permission we had from the insurance company was not to just do the story. It was to build the slide and then start halfway up the slide and seeing how that went which was actually kind of funny because I started halfway up the slide and I went down oop, and then boop, right off the end of the slide. Everyone thought I was like dead. I was like, there was going to like tree branches stick it up at the bottom of the slide. Turned out it was fine. So then I went a little higher and I went a little farther and I went a little higher and I went a little farther. And then we went to the top and sure enough, woo, flew and landed perfectly feet first, barely made a ripple when I entered the water. It was gorgeous. It was not to be the type of landing I was regularly going to have. In fact, uh, 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 at the end of, at the beginning of the next day, thinking like, oh, I got this down, which is like every time I have ever thought I've got this down, life has like whack, <laughs> slapped sense back into me. There is no such thing as having this down, seriously. So the next day, with that confidence, I entered the water, I slid weird, entered the water wrong, and got an instant headache, which lasted all day. And this was our last shoot day, and I had to jump repeatedly, 
Jumping repeatedly was tiring. The water was freezing. It was like 49 degrees. The motor on our camera boat crapped out. And the only thing we had to steer it was like this little tiny 12 volt putt putt motor so that after sliding and landing and being hurt and cold with a headache, I gotta wait while the, while the camera boat slowly makes its way over to me. It was like, uh, I was pissed. I was not having, I was not having the best day. Um, but so I explained, right? We set up the water slide and we worked it out with the insurance company uh, to creep up on this to make sure it was safe. And that was a regular procedure. We, we executed at Mythbusters. Um, our safety guy and stunt coordinator, Nick Plache, uh, normally he and his wife, Angie, did all of their work for us remotely from Los Angeles. They would talk to the insurance company, they'd work out safety procedures with us, they'd be on hand while we were filming to help solve problems. But in this one, really specifically, it was so complex, Nick actually came up to be part of the shoot and it was invaluable, he was phenomenal. Um, I'll tell one story from this, from this shoot, which is, um, like I said, on the final shoot day, I've got to do a bunch of jumps to figure out where the pool should be in the water so that if I miss it, I don't die. Uh, I mean, the, it, the target is on the water so I can land anywhere, but hopefully I'll land in the middle of our target. But I'm getting more and more cranky as the day goes on. I'm tired, I'm cold, every jump is hurting more. And I'm on the final jump. And this is either the end of the story or it means we've got to come back for another day. And I'm like, I climb back to the top of this muddy hill in muddy wetsuit. I'm either cold in the water or overheating outside. And I'm just not feeling good. And I'm standing there at the top of the water slide. I'm just kind of waiting for everyone to get into position and really looking forward for this day to be over, which is honestly the wrong mindset. And I look over and Nick has tromped to the top of the hill. Nick's position during this story was to be down at the bottom where the curve was. That's where anything bad was going to happen. He was positioned so he could be there to <laughs> implement the maximal safety. But here he is up at the top of the hill and I see him and he says, do I have anything to tell you? No. I know my impression of Nick here is that he sounds a little like a California surfer and that's because Nick sounds a little like a California surfer. Do I have anything to tell you? No, I have a question for you though. Are you a freaking stunt man or what? Cause that's what I tell my crew here in LA. I tell them Adam and Jamie the real thing. They can do the work. Now, I know, I Jamie and I are famous for doing our own stunts on the show. Um, but among the things I have learned about doing my own stunts is that I am not a stunt person and I'm not an adrenaline junkie. I know that those two things seem, it, it, impossible given my my career and yet they're true i'm not a stunt person because i know stunt people and i think i have some beginning understanding of just how difficult that job is that it involves like an incredible kinesthetic understanding of where all of the elements are including the camera the storytelling the performance the physical performance all of the things that stunt people do just absolutely mind-blowing i am not one of them so for Nick to say, you are close to being one of them, it's a crazy compliment. And I'm, look, I'm pissed. It's not like I'm feeling all warm about this. I realize he's giving me a lecture because I'm cranky and he's trying to get my head back into the right space. And he's like, that's what I tell my guys. Adam and Jamie are the real thing. Adam, he says, it's not about what's going on here. Referring to the body that I am traveling around in that is super uncomfortable and I'm cranky about it. He says, it's only about what happens up here. And then he says, the only thing you should be asking yourself when you get to the bottom is does my director Alice want another take? And then he says, I'll see you at the bottom, dude. And he trumps back down to the bottom of the hill. It's literally, I got, I got a Gipper pep talk from a third generation stunt man. Uh, and it worked. That last jump into the pool, into the pool, into the target, I landed direct center. It was a beautiful jump, and I credit Nick Plache totally with uh, with getting me into the right mental space for that jump. But uh, I'm so sorry, uh, Mark. I've gone off the rails here. You were asking about the crew getting to try this. So yeah, uh, we left. This is we shot this in Ione, California, uh, which is a couple of hours north of San Francisco. And we finished this on a Thursday and we left uh, our key core crew of Scott, Sor 
Someone is at the front door. No one's at the front door. That's that's my house, not my cave. Anyway, Will Nail, Scott Sorensen, Don Best, and a couple of other people were left in Ione to take down the water slide. We couldn't leave it up because, you know, this is a town where there are teenagers. Someone's going to hurt themselves on this thing. So we had to pull it down as fast as possible. We left those guys to do it. And we specifically explained to them that they were not allowed to go down the slide. As their employers, we instructed them that they were, that it was against the rules for them to go down the slide and that if they did, they would not be covered on workman's comp. That was our, that was our threat. I'm, I'm sure if something happened, but anyway, so we said that, like, don't go down the slide. You boys don't do it. Of course, they all did it. <laughs> Every last one of them. I think, if I remember correctly, that Don Best went down head first, like Superman, like pointing down. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. That was terrifying. Apparently made a beautiful arc as he flew 70 feet through the air. <laughs> I still somewhere have a, a, a DVD with the raw footage, terribly shot on some old Sony camera uh, of the crew breaking the rules and trying that out. No one was hurt, which is why I'm telling you this story. <laughs> uh, and I'm very glad for that. Th the fact is, that crew did understand. I, I wouldn't have changed a thing. That crew totally understood what safety was about, but of course we couldn't unsupervised tell them that it was okay to do that. It was their prerogative, I guess. And you know, it's 10 years later, who, who cares now? But. <laughs> uh, Mark, thank you so much for that awesome question. I really appreciate it. Uh, tested patrons, keep submitting your awesome questions, and I'll continue to answer them in this forum. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time.